Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've done another one of my mature aged makeup tutorials. The last one I did was on my mum. I did uh, three videos with her and eye makeup for mature aged ladies and also flawless skin makeup for mature age skin. That video got a great response. You guys seemed to really enjoy it and you thought it was helpful and you requested that I do another makeup tutorial for mature aged women. So. I've done one today for you. Today I actually enlisted the help of my mum's good friend Sue. She is absolutely beautiful and so lovely and she was wonderful enough to let me borrow her face for this makeup tutorial as well. So without further ado I will get straight into the video. Remember if you want to see more mature aged makeup tutorials make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know and comment down below and let me know what kind of makeup you want to see. First I'm going in with the Guerlain Meteorites Primer. This is great if you do have mature skin because it's very radiant, it's incredibly hydrating and it's very smoothing as well. So I'm just using a Real Techniques foundation brush to go all over Sue's face with the primer and I'm really working it into any fine lines or rough areas of skin. I'm going to let that soak in for about 3 minutes and then go in with her foundation. For Sue's foundation I'm using the NARS Velvet Matte Skin Tint Foundation in the colour Light 3. I'm applying it to her forehead using a damp beauty blender. I'm only going to be applying it to her forehead and her eyes for the moment because I will be doing a dark smoky eye and I want to be able to clean up the fallout really easily so the rest of her foundation will go on at the end of the tutorial. As you can see I'm now using a little brush from It Cosmetics that I will link in the description box down below for you. By the way all the products will be linked in the description box in case you need any of them. I'm applying the same foundation that I used on her forehead onto her eyelids as well. You can use eye primer for this, you can use concealer, but I personally prefer to use the same foundation all over the face. I'm just working it onto her eyelid using this little brush and you'll see as well that I actually lift up her lid and work it into any fine lines on the eyelid as well. You want to create a really smooth even base for your eyeshadow to go on top of. I'm now applying a little bit of foundation underneath the eyes as well just so I've got a base for the eyeshadow underneath the eyes. I'm now going to set it in place with powder. I'm using the NARS All Day Luminous Powder in the colour Light One Siberia and I'm applying it anywhere that I've put the foundation. So her eyelids, her forehead and that's it actually. <laughs> I'm only applying a small amount but I want the foundation on her eyes to be dry. If it's still wet you'll have a really hard time blending your eyeshadow out and it will get kind of patchy. So make sure the eyelids are set incredibly well in place with powder and that way the foundation is not going to crease either. Moving on to eyes, I'm applying a highlight to Sue's inner corners and also underneath the arch of the brow bone. I'm applying it really gently because I will be reinstating the highlight later on in the tutorial after I've done her darker eyeshadows, but I wanted to put a base of highlight there first. The colour I'm using is Ice Queen from Makeup Geek. It's a very light highlight shade eyeshadow with a tiny hint of shimmer to it. Don't bring the highlight down too far on the brow bone, just keep it where the arch of the brow bone is. This will help lift the eyes and make them look much more open and awake. Now I'm using a base shadow brush from Real Techniques, again I'll link it down below for you and the colour I'm going in with now is Frappe from Makeup Geek. It's a terracotta kind of shade and it is matte. I'm going to be applying this shade in the dome shape. Now if you guys don't know what the dome shape is, that is my technique that I use for all hooded eyes. It just looks so flattering on hooded eyes and it's so simple and easy to do and it's also very versatile. I have done a really in-depth tutorial on the dome shape so I'll put a card in the top right hand corner there. You can click on that and then watch the in-depth tutorial on the dome shape if you want to. But basically what I'm doing is I'm applying the eyeshadow in just that, a dome shape. With hooded eyes what you want to do is open your eyes and look at yourself front on in the mirror. If you can't see your eyeshadow, so for example if the hood of your eye is covering your eyeshadow, it shows you that you need to bring it up higher. From there you can see that I took a little purple blending brush and I was using that just to blend around the edges of the dome shaped eyeshadow. You want the eyeshadow to be really soft, you don't want it to be obvious where the eyeshadow stops or starts. But basically just trying to warm up the eye area and create depth to the eyes. If when you're blending your eyeshadow you seem to lose the pigmentation then simply just go back in with your eyeshadow and reinstate it until you're happy with the pigment that you have. Now I'm gradually adding a little bit more depth to the eyes. I'm going in with a deep brown colour called Americano from Makeup Geek and I'm applying it to the outer corners of Sue's eyes in that shape there. What I'm basically doing here is really working on elongating Sue's eyes to make them look bigger and wider. This looks really really sexy and it flatters pretty much every eye shape there is. It looks especially amazing on hooded eyes. 
I got Sue to open her eyes and when she did, I couldn't really see the eyeshadow. So that just showed me I need to bring it up higher. So that's what I did. I went back in with Americano and brought the eyeshadow up higher, but still winging the eyeshadow out at the same time. I then went in with a blending brush and again blended all the way around the edge just to soften the eyeshadow up. Sue was going out for dinner that night with her husband and she wanted to have a really intense smoky eye, kind of like the smoky eye that I was wearing that day. So I then took a matte black eyeshadow from Makeup Geek called Corrupt and on a small pencil brush I started trying to elongate her eyes with the black as well. That just adds an extra intensity and it really brings out the green in Sue's eyes as well. As you can see I'm concentrating the black just to the outer corners of Sue's eyes and then with whatever is left on my brush I was bringing that in towards the inner corner of the eye. As you can see now, I just had to lift Sue's lid so that I could coat any areas of the eyelid that were covered by fine lines. It doesn't sound too pleasant, I know, but that is the truth of mature skin. There is sometimes going to be fine lines and you just want to make sure that you've coated everywhere on the skin with whatever makeup you're using. I then went in with a blending brush and again just blended the black eyeshadow out so everything was really soft and smoky. You just want to make sure that you concentrate your black to the outer corners of your eyes because if you bring it in too close to the inner corners of the eyes, it can actually make your eyes look very small and very close together. So the idea of the black is to add drama and intensity to the outer corners of the eyes and draw the eyes out. Here I'm applying some eyeliner to Sue's top waterline. My favorite one to use is Urban Decay 24-7 Waterliner because that one stays put for a very long time. It's the longest wearing eyeliner I've found yet. I am a huge fan of applying eyeliner to the waterline on mature eyes, especially the top waterline. This really thickens up the appearance of your top eyelashes and it lifts the whole eye area up. With mature eyes, you'll see that I like to concentrate all my depth of color to the top eyelid. This really opens your eyes up, draws everything up and it just gives such a youthful appearance. On the other hand, if you were to concentrate a lot of the depth of color to the bottom eyelid, it has the opposite effect and it kind of draws everything down, makes the eyes look droopy and kind of tired. So that's why I'm focusing a lot of depth of color on the top eyelid. This part here I really like. I took a winged eyeliner brush from Sigma, which I'll link down below for you, and I just went back in with Makeup Geek's Black Corrupt Eyeshadow. I'm applying this kind of the way that I would as if I was using a liquid eyeliner but I'm just using eyeshadow so that it's really soft and smoky. I'm going back in with a little flat brush from Zoeva and just blending that out ever so slightly. By doing this, I'm giving the impression that Sue's top lash line is really thick and has a lot of volume. Again, it's just going to open the eyes up and really intensify her eyes. But at the same time, it's very, very easy to do because we're not using tricky liquid liner. We're simply using matte black eyeshadow, which you can then blend out and create a beautiful, soft, smoky eye look. The same deal with this part as well. Concentrate the black again to the outer corners of the eyes and then with whatever is left on your brush, drag that towards the inner corners but don't apply a lot of black eyeshadow on the inner corners. Here I'm just reinstating Sue's highlight like I said I was going to do. So I'm going back in with Ice Queen and very, very gently and very minimally, I'm just applying a little bit more highlight to the inner corners and underneath the arch of the brow bone. You'll find with your blending of your darker colors that your highlight gets lost a little bit so that's why I just went back in and reinstated it. Here I'm just applying some mascara. You can't really see because my hand's in the way, but I just applied some mascara to Sue's top lashes. If you look carefully, you'll see that I'm coating underneath the lashes and I'm also coating behind the lashes. When you make sure to coat both sides of the lashes, it makes them appear so much thicker and more voluminous. I'm also making sure to get the mascara into the roots of the lashes and the inner corners of the lashes. Now I'm using IT Cosmetics Skinny Brow Power Pencil to fill in any gaps in Sue's eyebrows. I want to keep her eyebrows very natural, I don't want them to be overly structured and I certainly don't want to create power brows because I just don't think it's going to suit her face. She's got really delicate features. So I thickened them up just a little and I filled in any gaps and I made sure to keep brushing through every so often so that I could keep the eyebrows nice and natural. I then went in with NARS Brow Gel, I just used the clear brow gel and I brushed all of Sue's eyebrow hairs up. When you do this, when you brush the eyebrow hairs up, again, it gives a lift to the eye area and it really opens up the eye area and gives a really youthful appearance. Not to mention it also holds the eyebrow hairs in place all day. Now I'm just cleaning up all the fallout underneath Sue's eyes and you'll see now that's why I didn't apply the foundation on her whole face. I'm just using a simple uh, makeup wipe, but you can use any makeup wipe or any makeup remover that you like. And now I'm going in with my secret product. This is the Bye Bye Redness Cream from It Cosmetics and it is a lifesaver if you have redness or rosacea. 
I take the tiniest amount of Bye Bye Redness and I apply it with a matching It Cosmetics brush anywhere on Sue's skin that looks extra red. So for Sue, it would be pretty much in the T-zone. So a little bit on her nose, a little bit on the chin, and a little bit on the cheeks. I only use the smallest amount. A little goes a very, very long way. And then I very, very gently brush it out with the brush. This brings the color of the skin back to a neutral tone and it really tones down the redness so that you don't need to use as much foundation. For foundation, I'm just going back in with the NARS Velvet Matte Skin Tint and I'm applying it again with my damp beauty blender to the rest of Sue's face. I only want to use a little bit of foundation. This is a matte foundation, which I personally think looks best on mature skin because mature skin can tend to have quite a few fine lines. In my opinion, if you use something that's really shiny, a really dewy, shiny foundation, the shine in that foundation actually catches the light and highlights anything underneath it. So that means it's going to highlight any fine lines on the skin as well. Whereas if you use a matte product, it's going to give the appearance of really smooth skin because it actually absorbs the light and that way it's not highlighting anything underneath the skin. This foundation does have really good coverage, but I'm only using it very minimally on Sue's skin because she already has good skin. She doesn't need an awful lot of coverage. By using the Damp Beauty Blender, that's also helping to sheer out the foundation as I apply it. You want to make sure that you work the foundation into any fine lines on the face as well. You want to work the foundation into any fine lines in the skin. So even if you have to spread the skin out or hold folds of skin taut so that you can make sure you get the foundation into all those fine lines, that again is going to give you a really smoothing appearance to your foundation and to your skin. Moving back to eyes for a second, I'm now going in with another miracle product from It Cosmetics and this one is the Bye Bye Under Eye Corrector Concentrate Cream. It's a really orange cream and it cancels out any blueness underneath the eyes. So Sue doesn't have a lot of blueness under her eyes, but she does have a little bit. So I'm going to go in underneath her eyes, color correct it first, and then apply a brightening concealer on top of that. If you were to go straight in with a brightening concealer, the blue is actually going to show through it and you're still going to have the dark circles under your eyes. In fact, they're going to even be highlighted. So make sure you color correct before you brighten up underneath the eyes. So on the same damp beauty blender, the concealer I'm using is from NARS and it is the Radiant Creamy Concealer. The color I used on Sue is Light One Chantilly. I applied this very minimally because you don't want concealer creasing underneath the eyes. So I put it on the back of my hand, took a little bit on my beauty blender, and then gradually built up the product from there so I could control how much I was applying. I then set it in place using the same powder that I used on the rest of Sue's face, which was the NARS All Day Luminous Powder Foundation Powder. By the way, that little brush there from Real Techniques is amazing for setting powder in place around the eyes. It is the best brush for that. I'll link it down below for you. Now you guys might know by now I absolutely love using a highlight strategically on mature skin. I don't see why you shouldn't. Because I've mattified the rest of the face, I think a little bit of strategic highlight looks absolutely beautiful. So I applied the Josie Moran Argan Enlightenment Illuminizer onto the top of Sue's cheekbones and then blended it out from there. Now I'm setting the rest of Sue's face in place with the powder and again I'm just using the same NARS one that I used for the rest of the face. Now that her foundation is set in place and it's dry, I'm going to go in with a powder bronzer. This one here is absolutely beautiful. This one here is the Hourglass Lighting Bronzer and it's in the color Luminous Bronze Light. I'm applying it anywhere that the sun would hit naturally. I'm not going to do any contouring on Sue's face because contouring on mature skin can sometimes make the face look like it's lost the fullness and it can kind of just make the face look really drawn. So what I like to do instead is to add a really beautiful sun-kissed glow to the skin. In saying that, however, I did apply a little bit of that bronzer underneath Sue's chin to add a bit of contour definition underneath the chin. So I kind of went back on myself there, but yes, I suppose I did do a little bit of contouring, but only underneath the chin. Now for blush, I'm using another Hourglass product, and this one is the Ethereal Glow Blush. Again, it's very subtle, very beautiful, gives a real radiance to the skin, and I'm applying it onto the apples of the cheeks, and with whatever is left on my brush, sweeping it up and away to nothing. Scooting back to eyes for a second, I'm applying a little bit of Frappe, which was our original eyeshadow color, directly underneath the lower lash line. I'm applying this as close to the lashes as possible. I want to add just a little bit of depth underneath the lower lash line to balance the top eyelid, but I want to keep all the darker colors, as I already mentioned, on the top eyelid. I applied a little bit of mascara to the bottom lashes, but not too much. Finally, we're moving on to lips. I'm coloring Sue's lips in with lip liner first, and the one I'm using is Ex-Girlfriend from Urban Decay. This was part of the Gwen Stefani collection. I really like to color mature lips in with lip liner, because lip liner will last so much longer on the lips than what lipstick would. 
and it also allows you to get really perfect, neat definition on the lips. Now instead of applying lipstick on top of that, I went in with a pigmented lip gloss. And the one I used was from NARS, and the color is called Instant Crash. <laughs> this lip gloss is really hydrating, very comfortable, not sticky, but it's got as much pigment as what a lipstick would. There we are guys, that brings us to the end of the video. How beautiful did Sue look, if I do say so myself? <laughs> Although she was beautiful to start off. I hope you guys found that helpful. Leave any questions you might have in the comments for me down below and either I will try and get back to you and answer you, otherwise I'm sure one of my subscribers will have the answer and will be able to help you out. Remember, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know and I'll do more of them for you. Subscribe to my channel if you do want to see more mature aged makeup for you beautiful ladies and men out there. Thank you so much watching. I love ya and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!